My name is Sam Maditsky. I'm 31 years old and uh, I've been kiteboarding now for the past 23 years. I came out here for a kiteboarding event and I fell in love with Squamish. I couldn't believe how windy it was and how often it was windy. That's, uh, I guess as a kiteboarder, one thing you look at for locations to, to travel to is how frequent um, is the wind there. When I think of home, it's actually here on this bit. It's not Squamish as a whole. This is where I come when I want to see everyone. This is where I come when I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. It's a community in itself. I don't think I know anybody who's been here that hasn't been really affected by this place. I can say at this stage in my life, it's, it's literally my whole life. And it's, it's a, I, I, can't, I can't even imagine what my life would look like without, without being able to be here. It offers a piece of life that is hard to find these days uh, in the calm, serenity, the glory of the nature. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's an unbeatable place to spend time. The Squamish spit is at risk of being removed to try and help the salmon, uh, which is obviously something that us as wind sports enthusiasts care about. But we want to explain just how important this place is and why there needs to be an alternative that works for everybody. It's tough when we've been told that it was going to be a realignment originally and then now it's a removal. The river basically was cut off from the estuary in 1970 onwards and the salmon stocks, in particular the schnook salmon, just plummeted from 1970 to the present. For two decades, the Squamish River Watershed Society has been working with the DFO and the Squamish Nation on a solution. When the structure was first put in, Squamish Nation was never consulted or engaged. And now, with the funding in hand, it is very likely work will begin to remove a large section of the spit in September to allow salmon to flow freely. You know, we've got kiteboarding's going to the Olympics in 2024 in Paris. Um, that'll be the first year kite surfing is in the Olympics, which is a huge milestone for the sport. And, um, you know, an area like Squamish and the Squamish Spit, it's hands down the best training grounds in all of Canada to train for, um, you know, an Olympic sport like kiteboarding. Jack Ryder, who's uh, from West Vancouver, he's now the best in Canada and the best in North America for uh, park and freestyle riding. And Jack grew up kiting at the Squamish Spit. You know, that's just one example of, you know, one of the top kite surfers in the world who's come out of um, Squamish. And I think it's got huge potential for more and more youth within kiteboarding to grow and to progress in Squamish and train because it is just like so many other sports, it is the highest level of kiteboarding um, is here in Squamish. the Squamish spit would be obviously a huge loss for the wind sports um, community here in Squamish but I also think it will affect tourism as a whole. There are a lot of other user groups that use the spit for uh, different activities and at the very least people go out there just to take in that view of Squamish. It's, it's stunning. Shannon Falls, the Malamute, the Chief, Garibaldi, Diamond Head. It's, it's really it's a beautiful spot to, to look at Squamish from. So Squamish has this natural amenity that very few communities have. And the ones that do have it, like Hood River, have really, really capitalized on wind sports. And to me, it's a shame that here you have a town that's named after wind, and yet not only are we not helping any of those wind sports, but we're actually taking away from it. It's just a sad event. mind-blowing if we're living somewhere where the ocean meets the mountains and we don't have water access in a place 
Squamish means wind and a place that's windy consistently throughout the summer. We have this incredible spot and we won't have water access to be able to do these water sports. It's, it's, it's insane. It's honestly, it's ridiculous. I just spent the last year in Europe and I was kiting in Europe and when I told people where I was from, a lot of them actually knew about Squamish because of the kiteboarding, which was really surprising. I mean, here I am in Germany and they know about this little mountain town in Squamish because of the kiteboarding. And there's a lot of people from Vancouver or the Lower Mainland, including myself, who moved to Squamish because of kiteboarding. The wind has brought me across the country. It brought me from Ontario to, uh, to the Sea to Sky and to Squamish and uh, I'm not going anywhere. Um, it's, it's an incredible place to live. There's a lot of like-minded people here and uh, I really, really hope we're able to realign the spit instead of remove the spit because I think there is a win for everyone. I beg you, whoever's in charge here, please, please have a look and see what you're potentially going to destroy forever. It's not about the kiters, it's about the community. and. Um, Anyways, I just hope someone listens.